just heard Coca by Kanika Kapoor featuring Ria Sean. Coca, Coca. Welcome, Kanika Kapoor, to, um, to Robin Minds. Thank you. Um, it's, it's really a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I'm still Coca, Coca, Coca. Okay, tell me, let's go back to the very beginning. Your musical influences, growing up, the inspiration. How did it all start? And when did you get to that point you decided music is it for me? Uh, I grew up in the north of India, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, the cultural capital uh, of, uh, of India called Lucknow. And uh, I moved to London almost 25 years ago. I lived in India where I studied music and um, I remember that moment where I was, I used to be the head of the choir and in my school and, uh, and I used to sing a lot and I used to participate in competitions. So I studied and did my masters in music and I was sort of moving more towards that. Um, that's how music started. Um, Okay, so what influences did you draw, say, from that mixed background? Because the north of India and in a, a city like London, yes. um, what, um, what, um, what inspired your decision? Uh, do, do you have any specific musical artist that played a huge role in becoming a musician? But I wouldn't say a musical artist, but I think my guru, my teacher, he was a very, very senior uh, artist and a, and a classical singer um, of his times, um, but very, very traditional classical, you know, from the famous Bar Banaras Gharana, as we'd call it, the, the school of music. Um, and uh, I was very inspired by him, but because I moved to London at a very mm -hmm. young age, I was a teenager, I um, almost sort of got the best of both the worlds, the East and the West and, you know, the culture, which is why a lot of my music and actually most of my music is very, very fusion between mm. India and the rest of the world. And, and now with Coca, I, yes. I was getting some Afro beats in there. So yes. We're, yes. we're seeing that fusion continue. Um, in becoming um, an artist, what are some challenges that you faced in doing this fusion music? Because a lot of times when we hear Indian music, it's very in its purest form. We know it from the movies, yes. the dancing, and then now you're fusing that with obviously your experience in London. And now we'll still come back to the Nigeria conversation, but I'd just like to know whether you faced any challenges, any questions, um, what was the, the initial reactions? You know, I mean, the, the reason that I got success was because I brought my own style and my own sound and my own fusion. Um, I started my career in London with, with a small uh, green screen video on YouTube and it went viral. It was my vocals with, with uh, a, a, a rapper from the UK, you know, and that became fire. And it was, for, it was the first time it was ever done like that, which is because of that, I got Bollywood movie offers and they asked me to come and replicate that style of music and singing and production in India. And that became a whole new sound in Bollywood, um, which was going very, very strong over the years. And I think it's just become the Kanika Kapoor sound. Um, and then now I feel that I'm, you know, bringing in yet another sound, which is Afrobeat and, uh, and the Indian hook lines. It, it is my style, what, what you listen to and what you will be listening to. Um, it's, it's something that, um, you know, is my style of music. I wouldn't even say that. So if staying else, true yeah. to your sound, your yes. influences, yes. that fusion yes. has opened lots of opportunities. So um, what made you go into um, the fusion between your music, Indian music, your cultural background and Afrobeats? So the last few years, I would say Afrobeats started, you know, you know, growing its fire. In, in India, and uh, I remember going to a cafe or to a club or to a party, and wherever I would go, there was a, a bit of Afrobeat. Um, and then it became more and more and more, and right now, it's, it's, it's really huge. I think the sound of, uh, you know, Afrobeat and Ama Piano and, you know, East African music, any, obviously they don't know the difference over there, but mm. they love the whole sound. But they don't know the artists, they don't know the 
the singers or the producers or where it's coming from. They just like the sound. Mm. I moved to Nigeria um, after getting married, so becoming the Niger wife, the official Niger <laughs> wife, I thought it would be best for me to sort of do a collaboration which takes the most amazing artists and the sound, sound of Nigeria, which is also my country now, uh, and mix it with India. And uh, that's how it's come together. Okay. I'm doing, doing exactly what was a success story of Kanika Kapoor back in the UK. So I'm doing that again yeah, with Nigeria. Yeah, replicating it here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, tell me about this, um, your new home. Like, how has Nigeria been for you? Um, what, what has been your experience so far living in Lagos and being a Niger wife? Um, so it's been coming up to three years where uh, I've been in and out of the country and uh, been spending a lot of time here last two years since I got married. Um, it's, it was a bit of a shock when I moved because suddenly from having this huge career in India, in, in the UK, and uh, you know, almost not knowing anybody in this country, uh, making friends, making you know, work colleagues, getting into uh, doing what I do best here. I set up a studio. Uh, I, I was very lucky that I met uh, a, a very famous artist who actually helped me in bringing together my studio and uh, introduced me to a, a, a producer who then brought in artists and it went on and on. And I have made some beautiful uh, relationships here. I now have a, a Nigerian manager who looks after work with me. We work together. Uh, I have my own team here, so it's. I think I've settled in pretty well, and I'm enjoying uh, life here. It's 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 a lot like India. Mm, okay. Well, what about the food? Um, is it spicy? How are you uh, coping with that? I love the Lagos chili. It's the first time I ever tried Lagos chili was here. I've never had anything like it. Um, I've tried bits and pieces of everything. Uh, I, I I eat more vegetarian food, so I haven't explored so much mm. uh, but i'm enjoying it and there's a huge community indian community here um in lagos mm. and i know in different parts of um, nigeria but i want to go back to the music now you mentioned um afro beats do you have any particular artists that you say for those people in india they might not have the same context you have as living in nigeria so you get to know the names of the artists the songs yes. the genres the yes. sub genres so any particular um afrobeat artist that you've been inspired from or has um, influenced your sound i wouldn't say i I've, I've not reached that place where i've been influenced by a particular sound i just love i'm still learning the difference between the different sounds of Afrobeat. And I, and I love, the more I learn, the more I want to learn. Um, so I'm overall inspired by the beat and, and the different techniques of it. And actually lately I've been listening to a lot of old school Nigerian African music uh, from the 80s and the 90s, you know, where I feel it is so much like Bollywood, old music. You know, it had a, it was more about compositions. It was more about the singing. Um, and now I think as it's changing, uh, we are, uh, I plan to do a lot more of the old school feel with the new Afrobeat, even over here. When you say the old school, do you mean maybe the high life or do you mean like fellas, which is Afrobeat yes, as opposed yes. to the Afrobeats? Um, any particular? I, mean, the, I, I don't remember the name of those the female artists that I had been listening to because it's, it's, it's been a lot of them. But yes, I mean, fellas was, was the old school feel. I, I, I still feel that bringing in the old school feel and merging it to, with today's Afrobeat, mm. even in Nigeria, would be so phenomenal. Okay, so we see you in Coca and you're collaborating with the Nigerian artist Ria Sean. What inspired that and can we expect more collaborations and if yes, with who? Uh, doing the song with Ria was a conscious decision. It was an Indian song where we featured her. Uh, it was on my record, it is on my record label called Bajau Records, which means play the music. Um, and which I launched, I, I think I'm maybe the first female artist in India to launch a record label. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. I, it was, I dared to do it. Uh, it's not easy, but you know, it's, it's going well.
And the reason I took Rhea, Sean, on that song was just to give India a little bit of a, a feel of another look, another style of a fusion. And yes, there is a whole album that's coming out now in the next month with so many new, um, different, some known, some new uh, Afrobeat and Nigerian artists. It's mm -hmm. all produced in my studio in Lagos. Okay. It's composed, written, sung, and the videos, everything is shot and done in Nigeria. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. Um, that's oh. an amazing thing. Talk about um, making this your home, yes. literally work and also um, family. Um, now let's go back still to the music itself. Um, you said there's a bit of um, some of the known faces and some of the less known faces. Do you mind sharing some of the names? Um, what kind of songs can we expect? Give us I, I a don't nice want teaser. To, I think the names are surprises, okay. but I think you will really enjoy the songs. Um, I have kept the songs more Nigerian with a hint of India, a hint of Bollywood style, mm -hmm. but it's a lot more Nigerian, I think. Okay. Um, Koka so the, was a little bit more Indian with a hint of Nigeria, but the upcoming songs are a lot more Nigerian because the point was to explore more Afrobeat. Okay. Now, when yeah. I was listening to Koka, I'm not very familiar um, with, I know there are different languages in India. So what Indian it language? It was Punjabi. Punjabi. North, okay. North. Okay. You know, some people say it's a Hindi, but now I know it's, it's Pun Punjabi. Punjabi. So are we expecting more Punjabi in this album? Are we expecting Yoruba, Igbo, Hausa, Ibibio? It's a bit of everything. We have a lot of Hindi. We have, I'm actually si singing in Pigeon too. Okay. Uh, so the next single has me singing a bit in Pigeon. Okay. And uh, it's pure, pure Nigerian music okay, so and style. When the album does drop, um, what are your plans? Because you've set up a record label. Um, when it comes to distribution, are we expecting maybe tours across Nigeria? Are we expecting um, headline shows? Are you taking it beyond Nigeria? I, I, I feel that um, the people of Nigeria have to know me a little bit um, and my music. Once we have the album ready, of course, we will be uh, taking it uh, to different places to, to play, to sort of do the right distribution. The distribution is out of Nigeria. And, uh, and we have a plan. Okay. We'll be back. Oh, okay. <laughs> so a lot of the music coming out that seems to do well these days are the ones that people um, vibe to, yeah. can dance to, <laughs> like, like the coca. Are we, are we expecting more of that? Are we going to see maybe a challenge, for example, yes. on TikTok? Yes, the next something? song is, is, is going to be a challenge. I think people will enjoy that challenge because it's a, it's a very interesting song where we have an Indian hook line and then uh, a really, really interesting play. And when is that song coming out? Because you're just uh, putting all the hints in there. When is that song there. coming out, guys? <laughs> <laughs> you're just giving us all. I think the you song is ready. Us? The song is ready. The video is ready. Uh, the mix and master is ready. Mm. The, Are the dance steps ready? Do the you want dance to show step us? is ready. I, you want to show us something? I can't, but I have to come back and do that because I'd love to promote that song separately and make you dance. Okay, okay. So, I think... By Indian dance, but you know, it's no, it's... right now the Indian dance is all okay. very you know. okay. <laughs> well, uh, we wish you the best when the song does come out. But um, now I'll move to what it's like um, your music executive hat because we've looked at being a performer, singer, songwriter, your musical influences, but now the business side of things. How have you been able to? Um, Continue to overcome the challenges, like you mentioned, being the first Indian to have this record label. Um, the challenge is also being in a new country. How, how are you able to surmount them? I go through uh, many days where I, I cry, I feel down, I feel helpless, I feel frustrated. Uh, but and then the next day comes and I tell myself, no, I can't give up. I will make this happen, I'll, I'll work, I, I just move forward, I work towards things, um, not thinking how and when things will happen for me and in my favor. It's mm. extremely hard for a girl uh, to single-handedly 
do or everything that I'm doing and I'm trying to do. I've been very brave. So I have to give myself that credit. And that pat on the back. <laughs> yeah. You know, I never used to do that. I used to be an, a very different person that, oh, you know, no, no, I, I don't, I, I don't and I don't. Now I, I, I do say that I have a lot of love and respect for myself. And I think every girl listening to me should always go after her dreams, even if it takes longer. Um, so I want to be that inspiration for all the girls in the world that follow me. Well done. Uh, it might take a little longer, but it shall happen. And, you know, you have to love your work and what you're doing. And you're spending and that your time. too. Yes. Embracing the journey, not just the destination. Now, you mentioned how the fusion music opened up like a whole new vista in Bollywood. Is that something that you're hoping um, to get into? Do you see maybe your music also coming into um, Nollywood? Because in the past, we've seen some... Nollywood, Bollywood um, collaborations that have gone to the cinema on streaming platforms. Yes. So is that part of um, the plan? I mean, I feel that I'm, I, I'm still relatively very new in, um, in Nigeria. I think the moment people start listening to Kanika Kapoor and all her ocean of music that's coming out in Nigeria, I'm sure that they will give me a chance and, and we will do something in Nollywood. Why not? I'm, I'm so open to doing and exploring uh, new adventures and and work. So um, I'm sure Nollywood's going to happen. Oh. It it must. I I am the bridge between Nigeria and India. So I think how can you not have a Nollywood movie with with you know a song like I I would sort of put together. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm, and I'm sure people are watching and are listening and they're they're going to be looking out for the music when it comes out because yeah. um, I think this day and age because of um, globalization technology we can reach a whole new yes. audience. Um, when people listen to your music, um, what's the intentionality behind it? What do you want them to go away with? Um, is it feel good? Is it uh, more reflective? Do you use your music as um, a tool for social change? So to be honest, um, every song that I've ever done is, is ruled by emotion. Mm. There is... Uh, I'm known for celebration, and but I think that when I did and recorded some of my most famous songs, which were dance, the, some of the greatest dance songs of Bollywood, I was at my lowest and an emotionally uh, quite a broken person. So for a girl who was um, not all there and happy and excited to be singing and making everyone dance, that was an emotion that connected with different people on different, you know, stages of their, their feelings. I mean, I'm not able to explain, but my songs, even if it's a sad song, even if it's a love song, even if, if it's a celebration song, I my connect with people is my emotion, what I put into the song. I don't think about the rest. Mm. I just don't think about the rest of it. I don't think my, my songs are clean. Uh, they always have like an underlying emotional meaning to them. Um, it could be a girl. Uh, a lot of my famous songs and some new songs that are coming are all very girl-centric about how girls feel or want to be treated or about how little, little girls dream. You know, and this has come from a place of um, personal experience. Yes, reflection. it has. It is my my upbringing uh, in the small town, in a uh, with with the dreams that I've grown up with, um, and experiences of life that I, I had during my downfall for a long time. So I think it's a lot of those little little bits that I sort of naturally put into my songs without knowing. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm going to come back to the vibrancy of, you know, the culture here in Lagos, whether it's the food or the fashion, um, the music and all. How are you incorporating all those elements? Because you mentioned that um, your videos were all produced here. So are there particular designers that you've collaborated with uh -huh. in terms of the fashion? Yes, I have. Yes, um, yes spill the I tea. am... Uh... I, am, I can't even tell you how much love I have for the new uh, way of dressing I'm starting to have, the, the new wardrobe that I have. <laughs> uh, I've been exploring all the, the fashion in Nigeria. I've been uh, 
wearing a lot of Nigerian designers. And every time I post anything wearing a Nigerian designer, everyone from India is asking me, oh, this looks really chic. This is very cool. We love the print. We love this. We love the cut. Where is this, where is this from? Uh, I do feel that I need to take the Nigerian fashion to India. Mm. They would love it. Uh, so I've been wearing a lot of Lisa Falavio, um, Banky, Banky Cuckoo. I've been wearing uh, Eki Kerry. I've been, uh, there's a lot more that I've been sort of wearing. And my videos have a lot of Nigerian fashion. Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. And then what has been like a um, standard experience for you as a Nigerian wife, as a migrant who has now made this place home? Um, can you point to maybe an experience or two? Huh. What, ex what kind of an experience? Are Good we one, I'd hope. Good one. Up. I mean, like I said, for anyone who moves to a, a new country where she knows almost nobody except her husband and her in-laws, uh, from a new home to settling in and understanding what's around me, it's been a very pleasant experience. Okay. My, my, I think my husband made it very easy for me. You know, oh. he's been very caring and very nurturing. And I think he's been treated, my in-laws and my husband, they've treated me like this little girl that they are very protective about. And uh, I think they forget I've grown up, which is, <laughs> <laughs> but it's very sweet that they do. So I, I think I've had a great experience uh, living and, and settling in. I never feel that I'm away from home or it's become home. Okay. And finally, I'll just say, um, what message do you have to your fans out there? I would just like to say that uh, I'm, I'm doing beautiful music for, for the world, for uh, the people of both my countries, uh, for the people of India, for the people of Nigeria, and just give your Niger, Niger wife a chance. Give your Niger wife a chance. And, I love that. And uh, I'm here. I'm here to stay and... And the message is that if I can do it, anyone can do it. Thank you very much, Kanika Kapoor, for being our guest on Robbie Minds. And all the best with the album and all the singles and the challenges. Thank you. Um, Thank you for having out. me. Thank you. And this is where we close the show on Robbie Minds. My name is Isabella Adediji. Have a great afternoon. See you next week. Don't just stand